We're here. I made it. I really do need to change the start time on that schedule. Alright. So, hope everybody's having a good weekend. Sorry if I sound nasally, my allergies are pissed. I just had a sneezing fit before we went live, just as I was about to go live, and I was like, nah! <laughs> oh, I'm still haven't recovered from it. I apologize. Oh, my goodness. Okay. So I'm trying to get myself together here. So how is everybody... Everybody's doing good. We are going to be continuing to work on our needle felting project. We might take a break and paint after this one. I don't know yet. We will see. Still trying to plot out what I want to do with with the flamingo that um, I'm trying to sketch out. I've got the base flamingo in. I was trying to do something weird up here with leaves and stuff. Haven't made up my mind on that yet. Um, but the flamingo head came out pretty good considering it's the first one I've really drawn myself. So it Took me a while to sketch it though. Still have all my guidelines that I put in to try to figure out how wide things should be and stuff so I didn't fuck it up too bad. But you know, that's what you have to do sometimes. Alright, we got our finger protection on. As I am trying to adjust our camera today so I don't have to be halfway across my desk to be in camera view. Alright. So this is where we left off. Um, <clears throat> we were putting in our water reflection things. Um, yeah, so I think we'll be continuing on with that. Now I'm just trying to remember the colors that we were working with. I think we were working with cornflower. And that's the color of this shade of blue from Big Twist. It's their value line that I'm using. You use whatever you have, whether it's roving, R-O-V-I-N-G, um, or uh, acrylic yarn that you've fluffed. You've given the fluffified treatment to. Uh oh, Twitch. There we go. Twitch is being silly. As Twitch likes to be. Alright. So make sure that you've got your finger protectors on. And uh, we'll be getting started here. <clears throat> Oh, it's a bad season. It got super windy. Last night, we were sitting here, you know, all of a sudden. Well, actually, Russell had gone to bed. I was sitting here. And just this loud roar. You could almost hear it coming down the street. It was really crazy. So, I think we need 
So maybe thin that out just a little. All right, so for those that are new, we are working on this project. And um, we're following along with the Bob Ross Joy of Painting tutorial series. Except instead of painting today, we, well, I mean, we're not using oil paint. We're using um, fiber. Whatever fiber you happen to be using. And we are following along with season three and episode two. We already did episode one. And this is called Blue Moon. Um, now it does take us a lot longer to get through the tutorials than just watching it or um, just painting it and we have painted along with um, one of his seasons before so we're no strangers to that but I figured let's do a little something different this time and we'll uh, felt it because why not why the heck not the link in the chat if you want to watch the tutorial in full because we're going to be watching it very disjointedly. Yeah, this is just a little bit that I kind of pulled as we were going there. Alright. So I'm probably going to be trying to hold our blue, well, all of our blues, um, our lines that we're putting in here little bit taut just to keep them from getting too um, bunched up as they get tacked in there just so we have more of a line of reflected color instead of you know a huge solid chunk holiday weekend here. Hope everybody's, well, everybody that's off for it is a safe one. Or a productive one if you like to get shit done. If you're one of those people that can't sit still, I know the feeling. I have trouble sitting still sometimes. Sometimes. 
other times I have a hard time um, moving, but uh, depends on how much nervous energy is built up. A little bit of orange poking through in there from our felt base. So I just kind of want to get that covered up. This one we might need to add a little more dark in here and there and if we do we do I'm just trying to twist this together a little bit to make it a little bit more manageable me to uh, do the lines because I'm like stabbing everywhere but where I need to be. Story of my life. All right. might be thin enough here. Yeah, so sorry about that later start today. It happens sometimes if you're new here. We try not to have it happen too often, but I'm probably going to be changing the stream start time back an hour. poking up in through there. I'm not sure what I want to set forth. I deal with that. We'll figure it out. So doing this method, we kind of have to jump ahead a little bit further than where we actually are. At least as far as this one's concerned, um, because there's so much blending with the water in here. So I think and there's only so much we'll be able to do, right? So I think we're at a good spot in the tutorial to try to figure out how to get this all in here with where we're at at the moment. in over our 
Orange that's being super stubborn. We're just kind of trying to get those little, um, like the waves in, but like the different colors reflecting off of them. And like I said, we might have to come back in here and do a little bit more dark in places. If need be, because we don't want this solidly filled in. going to re-flatten out where we're at. It's getting a little lumpy. It's gonna happen. You don't have to do this part. It's just something I do that helps me keep things somewhat in order. Helps to re-flatten this out. Alright, now It might be a little too thin for what we want to do. Okay, so this guy's a little, a little thin, but we're gonna kind of sneak and stretch at the same time. Or as much as we can, anyhow. So that is actually a little bit thicker than I want it to be. So if it is, just pull some fiber sections off and try to restretch it. Okay. So I've got a couple of stop points in here for where I want to be. So that's what we're gonna try to work with here. As we put in this color at least, um, definitely have a lot to work through and it's been a week since I've looked at this or touched it um, so I kind of have to get back into the same flow that we were in last week so we'll see what we can do here as we go on. I will say, the one downside to these finger covers is that they make my fingers sweat. I mean, we're leaving them on. We're not going to take them off because that's how accidents happen, but they are making the fingers a wee bit sweaty. Alright. So we do have this sort of darker spot in there, but I think we might leave that. And we'll start to get this one tapped into here. So kind of like a painting, where do you think these wave tops would be reflecting at? 
well with paint I should say we are we are painting but we're using wool as our medium instead of wet paint um, if it gets a little wobbly it's okay it kind of helps lend to the whole water thing that all tacked down in there. All right, and I'm just picking up every so often because when I don't do that it kind of becomes one with the felt pad. Might be easier to pull up on foam but this one it like just suctions itself to it from all of the fiber going through and it kind of becomes one piece. Maybe we put fuel about here. I'm trying to figure out how I was setting this up. So this is like the top of... Yeah, we're probably going to have to advance... this a little bit. Okay. So this is the top of that wave kind of at the bottom there. Um, This is going to be the top of that wave in the back, or the more distinct wave in the back, because there's there's three fairly distinct ones here, and then we kind of got one rock in the middle here. All right. I think I'm going to put you up here, just for the time being. So I'm using a felt felting pad. It's much quieter than, um, there it is. It's picked up quite a bit of our fiber <laughs> from us working on stuff, and that's going to happen with this particular thing, um, with what we're doing. Um, most people go with a foam pad. Um, don't go with a foam pad if you don't like scritchy noises. If you're very ear sensitive, go with a go with a felt um, pad or some kind of pad that's not gonna be loud because you do have this metal needle that's gonna be piercing it, and um, it will get really uncomfortable on your ears. This is okay. This this to me is like crunching snow. This is like a more natural noise, I guess, or a softer noise um, in the grand scheme of things. Or like shaking the cereal box. This this is better than that god-awful piercing noise. I 
If you've decided your piece is long enough, just grab some scissors and a snippy snip. Totally able to cut this stuff. It's just, just fluff. It's just fluffy stuff. lay this stuff down. Sometimes it's hard to find where you were working. Okay. This one looks like it's going to be a little unruly, so we're probably going to double this guy up. Alright. This color that might be actually white or sky blue. I can't remember which color it was. We're gonna start off with the sky blue <clears throat> and then figure out if we can see the difference of the white off of the sky blue. And if we can, then we'll add a little bit of, of white highlight. Um, when they're stretched out thin, it's kind of hard to see the pigment in the sky blue. The sky blue looks almost white. At times, for me at least. Could be my lighting. That's entirely possible. See, that's a little chunky, I think. Oh, the crazy stabber. <laughs> nice to find you again. <laughs> stab, stab, stab. Oh, thank you. Yep, I'm crazy. But, you know, it's gotten us this far, so that's fine. We are working on the second tutorial of season three of The Joy of Painting, following along with um, Bob Ross as best as we can. This one's been a bit of a challenge, for me at least. Um, first time trying to do uh, waves like this in this medium, so we're and a night scene at that, so um, we're, we're trying to figure it out, we're trying to do something with it. I hope you are well. And uh, thank you for popping in. Alright, so just trying to get a feel for where we're at here because this is our back wave right the top of it um yeah so let's see I'm not gonna take this all the way over to there I'm just kind of laying this in here maybe one day you don't need the leather and you have Stab kill says to destroy the world. Yeah, you know, maybe, maybe. My hands are pretty messed up as it is, so. Who knows? Who knows? 
all kinds of battle scars between between uh, art projects and the dogs. I'll tell you, my one little guy, he's like 20 pounds. And no matter how much we try to stay on top of their nails, they're, they're just growing like crazy. And their nails are dark, so we have a hard time seeing where the quick is in them, so sometimes we let them get a little longer than they probably should. But he lays there and chews on them, right? And, um, <laughs> the one day he was chewing on them, and, uh, I didn't know it, and he got, like, a razor-fine point on the one edge, and he jumped up and... He was so excited to see me. He um, jumped up and he kind of fell forward and raked his claws down my arm. And actually, you can't see it in this light. I had a scar running down my arm. I saw it. Oh, there it is. It's very faint. I don't... Uh, it kind of shows up in this light. Like right along in here, there's like a faint, faint red mark. It ran all like all the way from here all the way down to here, but it's uh, finally fading. I didn't think that was ever going to fade. I was like, why, puppy? <laughs> why? And like, he barely broke the skin too. That's what killed me. Like, it was like a scratch. It wasn't any deeper than a friggin' paper cut, but oh my god. It took forever. You're a sculptor, you don't go a day without healing. Yeah. Yeah. I've wanted to get into pottery, um, but I, I would need a garage. <laughs> <laughs> to do that in um, I would make too much of a mess inside I, I know that for a fact I'd probably be wearing two thirds of, of the pottery clay and I don't have a kiln and all that so that's like big bucks there for something I'm not sure that I would really do a whole lot with <laughs> it's a lot just to try but I've got some Sculpey and I've played a little bit with that. There's a couple things I want to try to do with that. I just haven't had the chance to. Soon though, we, we might be adding a second art day in during the week. Um, I have to see. I was originally thinking about adding um, Planet Coaster in when we're done with Park Attacked, but um, I'm thinking that might not be such a good idea after all because my hands lately, uh, my dominant hand has been real angry from just doing like a couple hours of playing at zoo. So I'm like, oh, uh, maybe this isn't a good idea. My wrist has been very tired. I would equate it to almost color pencil wrist fatigue, that kind of tired. But, I mean, who knows? Yeah, you don't fire shit either, you wish you could. Honestly, I joke, but the stab, stab, stab looks cathartic. Yeah, it is at times. It, it really is, because you just kind of zone out, and you're just like, oh, okay. And then with the mat that I have, um, the, uh, the the um, felt. Uh, this is an 8 by 10 um, needle felting mat. So like when you stab, you're going into this. It's a lot quieter. It's a lot more soothing than, um, than, than some of the other products available out there because uh, the foam, the foam. At least like the... <laughs> The bulk of the foam mats I've seen are just nails on a chalkboard to me, and I, I just, I can't. I, I just can't with that. I saw a piece of... Where did it go? It's on the... There it is. It was like, it was over here to my left, and now it's not on my left. 
What on earth? Who's revving their engine? Someone's revving their engine. We live on a very busy street. Um, there's a huge church brick building across the street from us. So it kind of amplifies the noise, unfortunately. And, um, oh, that's so annoying. There's, a group of motorcycles that were revving their engines before going by, apparently. Holiday weekend and all, everybody's out and about, I guess. But, um, so the brick building across the street from us amplifies how loud the traffic noise is. And this is like the main road that goes through this small, small-ish town that's sort of rural. Not too rural, but like half farming community, half suburb kind of thing. Um, there's like a car wash down the street that a lot of people seem to hang out at, so especially on the weekends it gets a little extra, a little extra rowdy at times. What did Moobot start deleting here? The irony of always being humble and kind is being such a, a stabby pastime. <laughs> I don't know why it said there was symbol. Oh, maybe all the... Oh, okay. Like, all the, the dots there. That's all that was. Sorry about that. Moobot gets a little sassy. I think it was all of the... Um, uh, uh, the dots. I think that's what it was. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Moobot's just being Moobot. You're good. It, it wasn't bad. It's just, I think I have um, excessive symbols checked because sometimes I don't always have a mod available and um, Moobot just got a little carried away. That wasn't what I meant by excessive symbols, Moobot. I meant like blocks of emotes. L like let's not let's not do that. But <laughs> you're a dot maniac. You'll hold back. I am too at times. The dots just they convey so much sometimes. The dots get the feeling and the mood across more than anything. Words I'm not so good with. If I can remember the word I'm trying to find. So I'm a bit dyslexic. A bit. Can anybody be a bit dyslexic? Um, for the longest time when I was in uh, grade school, um, I honestly thought that I was in um, a special ed class like, was it once a day? I think it was once a day. Um, during a certain class period, they would pull me out. I have to go stu do stupid stuff that didn't make any sense to my brain. I'm like, why am I doing this? Um, and it'd always be like during a class that I probably should have been in, um, like English grammar or whatever. And, um, I didn't understand why and when they were testing me once a year they were like trying to get me to memorize shit so I'm like oh look at this picture and then they're like here's these bricks now or like little tiles and they're like replicate the picture while you're looking at it okay all right that's done now here's the picture and I want you to do it again with this picture but this time I'm only gonna let you see the picture for like 10 seconds and then I'm gonna take it away and now you have to remember what you saw so all that kind of bullshit. The entire time that they were making me do this, I swear I thought it was because I was having short-term memory problems the entire time. That's what I was led to believe about, oh, maybe a year ago now. 
We're standing in the kitchen and my mom is standing there. And we were talking about something and I'm like, well, you know, I have short term memory problems. It, they pulled me out of classes in school for it. I was like, you know that. She goes, you weren't pulled out for short term memory. And I was like, what? The ellipses is the three dots, right? But don't limit my dots. I, I will dot when I want to. Yeah, kind of. And um, she's like, she's like, you weren't pulled out for short term memory. I'm like, well, that's what everybody led me to believe. She's like, no, no, you're dyslexic. And I'm like. I'm sorry, what? I, I just kind of looked at her and I'm like, nobody thought to make sure I understood this <laughs> all this time. Oh, this is the middle one. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Um, I'm like, all this time and nobody thought that I should understand this fact. And made sure that I realized this was a thing getting through school a living hell because I didn't understand why I wasn't getting shit and why like homework and shit was taking me so long and why I wasn't you know doing well on tests I was a bad test taker to begin with but the dyslexia didn't help and uh, because I didn't understand or realize that that was what the fuck was going on with my brain um, I, I wasn't uh, I wasn't given the help that I probably could have had. The problem is not you, the problem is the box they try to put people in and yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, like like it's like I don't work like that. Um I'm a very visual learner a lot of the time. Like you can sit there and spout shit at me all day. And it, it just is not going to sink in, like, um, like, five minutes later, boop, gone. I might remember, like, three things disjointedly of, like, an hour-long talk that you may have had with me, um, unless I can, like, read it and see it. And, um, I'm just like, yeah, okay. So, teachers lecturing at the, like, the front of the classroom, yeah, that's not going to work. Um, it's just, it's just not. <laughs> so... I actually think there might be some ADHD issues in there as well. <laughs> that would help explain the other part of the puzzle. Um, I was never tested for that though. It, it certainly feels like it's there at times. Like I'll be doing something and I'll have to have like five other tabs open on my computer in like every 10 minutes unless I'm fully engrossed in what I'm doing. I'm, I'm bouncing from one window to the next and it's kind of frustrating at times because it takes me like twice as long to get something done. Like I help with podcast stuff on the weekend um, on Saturdays uh, with the person from the uh, World of Warcraft community that... Um, that runs it that I'm part of and have been part of for several years um, and even though I've been helping do this thing um, that I help her with on Saturdays like doing posts and things and scheduling stuff um, a normal person might take them maybe an hour hour and a half to get through it takes me almost four hours to get the shit done <laughs> on a good night Good, well, no, I guess good night, maybe two and a half, but most of the time I'm just like, meh, can't focus. I'm just like all over the place. I'll like go to YouTube to uh, schedule the stuff to their YouTube channel. Because, uh, you know, they, they record the podcast live. And um, so I have editing permission on there their YouTube channel to, to go and schedule things. So I schedule the VOD being dumped over um, from Twitch here. And uh, I'll be over there, you know, and I, and I go to my YouTube channel to, so I can switch accounts over into theirs. And um, next thing I know, it's like 45 minutes later and I've watched like three videos on how to do pastels, um, like the the history of like the Hindenburg and like something else and I'm like oh what time is it and I'm like oh shit 
<laughs> oh, you don't talk that much. You're fine. You're lucky to learn in uh, in all regards. But uh, don't have a label because if you look at all the great people in history, yeah, 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 exactly. No, it doesn't help. Um, it doesn't help. Sometimes, well, it helps to a degree, I think, so that you know how to work with how your brain is wired. But I don't think it should define you. I just think you should know so you can get the tools or the access to the things that you need to help you um, get done what you want to get done. But I don't think it should be... Um, I don't think that should, like, be... Um, like the forefront. I think this should be, oh, hi, I'm so-and-so. Um, this is some of the things that I deal with, but, you know. It's, it's part of me, but it's not all of me kind of thing. Yeah, no, no, you're fine. You don't talk that much. Have you, have you been here before? <laughs> My husband's like, Oh my god. He's like, how can you do this? And I'm like, what? He goes, how do you talk for like four hours straight? I'm like, I don't talk the entire four hours. He goes, yes, you do. And I'm like, I have tiny pauses. He's like, not really. And and I'm like, no, no, I, I, I do have tiny pauses. He's like, no. <laughs> he, I'm like, you should stream because like he'll sit there and play stuff and, and things. I'm like, no, no, you should stream. He's like, I can't talk that much. And I'm like, what do you mean? I was like, you don't have to talk constantly. He's like, you don't stop. And I'm like, yeah, I do. And he's like, no, you don't. <laughs> he's like, I mean this in the nicest way possible. He's like, you don't stop talking. And I'm like, well, I can't help that. <laughs> I'm Jimmy and I really love to make sure trains are on time. I have a job for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Instead of saying, you know, you have autism. Yeah, I mean, the husband actually um, was diagnosed uh, autistic. And we didn't know that he had it. Um, he was getting um, evals for his... Um, for his uh, disability application that they were having him do. And, um, the one doctor had already said that, sorry, words and trying to stab things at the same time as I, I sometimes my thought process gets a little broken up. Um, but they, uh, they were doing these evals that they're making them fill out just to get, uh, gauge the level of severity of the anxiety and depression that he suffers from and um they were going through it and they're like okay and he came home and like they had printed out um their i can't remember if they printed out or they verbally told him and then told him that you know he would get a written report later i think they gave him the written report right then um and he's like, oh my God, those questions were so, um, I don't know if really compound, but he's like, you would have hated that. He's like, you wouldn't have gotten through that. And I'm like, really? He goes, yeah. He goes, it was, he goes, it was a lot for me, and and the husband's a little bit um, more math savvy, and um, he doesn't have the dyslexic issue that I do, and he's like, that was a lot, and um, and I was like, oh wow, I was like, that's that's interesting. So um, he got through it, and he goes, guess what? Not only. Did they agree with the severe level of autism and the depression? He goes, they also, s or no, the severe level of anxiety, excuse me. Um, they said, I also have autism. And I was like, wait, what? He goes, yeah. He goes, that's what they said the test said. I was like, you're kidding me. Because um, I never would have pegged it. 
at all. But, um, well, he's at a higher rate of f of function in the autism range. They did say he also needed a high level of support. So um, it's more the, the anxiety and the depression that, that's kicking his ass. But that woven in doesn't help. at all. So then he started wondering about me and he's like, we should get you tested. Just because of his experiences with me on the daily. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know. I was like, maybe eventually we will, but Like, the thought of taking medication to help me focus, kind of like, meh, I'd, I'd rather not. I think we all have it to some degree. Yeah, you know, I... When did, I, that, when did that ever come up? I didn't think you'd be taking medication. No, 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 no. Um, like, for ADHD, they try to give you medication to help you focus. I don't think I would ever take it. You can't take pills anyhow. Yeah, no, I have trouble swallowing pills. That's, that's not going to happen. Um, but... Just the thought of it, I'm like, mm. yeah, I'm not affected to that degree. Like, I can, well, okay, four hours to get through something that should take, like, an hour and a half. Maybe. But, um, you know, I, I work with it, and uh, I, I've gotten by this far, this long, so it's just something I've learned to, to deal with. And when I need to get shit done, I can get it done, but... You know. At Leonardo da Vinci, he would be absolutely diagnosed with autism or, or Asperger's, but, but he was a genius. Yeah, I think it's just, you know, our, our brains just think differently. And I think we need different thinking people out there, um, if only to help get a different opinion or a different point of view at times. I'm trying to put this back wave in and you can kind of see the paint strokes like going up a little bit so that's why we're painstakingly doing this. I will say I am rather sound sensitive. Um, always kind of have been. Um, Probably just the way my ears are, but my dad, um, my dad, my dad used to race, um, used to be a, a boat race, a boat racing driver. Um, he used to race hydroplane boats, um, not professionally, but in the, um, amateur circuit. And, um, he would have to travel all over and stuff. Um, now that was before I was born and after I was born like a year later my mom's like no you, you can't do this anymore you can't be going away on the weekends and shit and leaving me here alone to deal with the child basically. Um, so she was kind of pissed off about that so he had to sell his boat and stuff but he still knew all the people right? Um, and Whenever they came into town locally, he would go to those events and uh, catch up with all of the people. And when I was old enough, he started trying to take me along. Well, I mean, you could buy passes to go into the pits where they had the boats up on the trailers to, um, to, to work on them and, and stuff. And... They would start the boats while they were up on the trailers out of the water. Oh my. Like, we, we need different thinkers and you love them just because they don't fit into the curriculum doesn't mean they are wrong. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Like, I did horribly in high school, but all of the classes were geared to, um to college prep and I knew that wasn't the direction that was going to be for me. Um, I probably would have done better in like a vocational training setting. 
um, but that wasn't an option where we were and I was struggling I tried to drop down or tr my mom tried to get them to drop me down to um, to what they considered the general classes um, at the high school that I was at and they wouldn't let her they wouldn't let me drop down they, they told her no they're like my GPA was too high and I was beginning to think what do I have to do start getting like totally tank my GPA on purpose to to, to get this class load to ease up a bit because five hours of homework for me to get through at night I'd come home change maybe have like a half an hour to an hour to um, decompress from the school day and then it was right into homework some days it was right into homework the second I walked in the door it depending on how much I had and even then I was still doing homework till like 10 o'clock at night stressing about the fact that I needed to get to bed because I had to be up at like 5 30 6 o'clock in the morning to get ready for school so and they wouldn't let me but um I forgot what I was saying before that I don't know I think I lost the thought before I started talking about <laughs> that's gone it might come back around I don't know yet we'll see don't remember what I was saying that happens sometimes if I'm ever in the middle of a story and you guys want me to finish it and I get distracted because my brain goes off in a different direction you're allowed to prompt me in the chat by saying, well, what about this? Finish this. And I might remember what I was in the middle of thinking and come back around to it. So you're more than, than allowed to remind me. Oh, the boats, the boats, the boats. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no problem, no problem. Sometimes the thoughts circle back on their own. I'm going to focus on boats. Okay. Let's get in this one that tapped into here. I don't know how this is going to look of what we're trying to do back here. Um, it might just end up being a hot disaster. You have to do the same uh, overachiever as a kid. Now you're scared of overselling yourself. <laughs> well, no. I mean... I'm not good at um, at uh, putting like I think everything I do looks like shit so some stuff definitely not winners um, <laughs> but we all we all have like the failed attempts at stuff and we need those failed attempts right so we can improve and I'll watch a lot of these um, art channels on YouTube and stuff and I'm like everything they do looks so incredible that when I look at the shit that I do I'm like there's no way there, there's their stuff looks so much better you know who the fuck am I to come in here and try to do stuff but I have to keep reminding myself that we're seeing edited down pieces and they may have like worked on that like six different times starting over so not to be quite so harsh on myself Take some uh, mental gymnastics at times. We all know the internal critic is the worst. You do shit I can't do. Yeah, you know, I mean, this isn't that hard. I'm just 
I haven't been doing this that long either. I've only started doing this since December. And I didn't even really know what the fuck I was doing, to be perfectly honest. I was really intimidated at first. I'm just stabbing shit through through a piece of felt and hoping it looks all right. Like, I mean, I've dicked around with painting for, um, for quite some time, right? Like since I was in my teens and, um, you know, like I really wanted to be, um, like, you know, people like, Oh, what do you do? What do you want to do when you grow up? And um, I'm like, well, I want to do art. And I was so excited when I first got into like art class. I loved going to art in grade school. And that was a big, big day for me. Like, yeah, we're going to make stuff. Um, and I always loved the smell of the 64 box of, of crowns, like the Crayola crowns and you open them. And then, you know, it was really awesome if you managed to get that 64 box and it had the sharpener in the back. Oh, that was awesome. Um, also, it is bias confirmation. We all think the things that are easy to us are, are just easy. No, in fact, true, true. I mean, you know, I, I just, I, this was a little intimidating at first, but I had been watching somebody do it off and on for for a year and watching different videos on YouTube and I'm like, I, I want to try it. I, I do want to try it. And, and I do like it. And I still do paint. Um, but I was so excited when I got to high school because as an elective, as an extra class, art was one of them. And I'm like, oh yes, let's, let's do this. Um, I kind of, I had had our art teacher before as a substitute covering a different subject, like history or something. So I was familiar with her and I kind of liked her and I'm like, okay, cool. I, I can vibe with this teacher. However, that was not the case when we got to art class. You love the smell of linseed oil. I've never smelled linseed oil on its own. Um, I get scent sensitive, so I have to watch what I smell or else it triggers a migraine. Uh, so I can't do perfumes or, um, some deodorants trigger a headache, hairsprays, lotions, like you name it. I have some oil paint. I have some Bob Ross oil paint stuff. So I guess there might be linseed oil in the paint itself. Maybe. Um, but I've not smelled linseed oil on its own, but, um, you know, I was, I was like, okay, we can, we can, we can, we can talk to this teacher. We, we kind of know what to expect from her. Um, in the art classroom, that was a completely different scenario. And, um, she hated me. So I was like, oh, okay. Like she wanted things done a specific way. And I understand that you know, she's trying to teach a technique. I, I, I do get that. But I was certainly not one of her favorite kids. It's so buttery. You want to eat it, but it's forbidden. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. That, that's, that's an art supply. You definitely don't want to even attempt to ingest. Um, but, but I don't know what it was. She just, when we got to the art side of things, it, it was, she was almost angry at me. And I'm like, I don't like this. Like you're being weird. And, um, like things had to be done on the exact angle in the exact spot. And it was, and I'm just like, like, she's like, if you don't do it this way, you know, it's, it's not, it's not right. It's bad. You, you'll never get anywhere kind of thing. And I mean, there were other people in the class that I think were kind of struggling a little bit where I was, but drawing was not where my strong points were. Um, never good at straight out 
drawing. Um, and it was, oh, I don't know what her deal was, but the whole problem in the world is that fools and fanatics are always certain, so certain of themselves, but wiser people are so full of doubts. And yeah, 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 I can feel that. I can feel that. And, um, like, if you didn't do it her exact way, then she was, like, giving you, like, barely passing grades. And I'm like... Okay, obviously you and I are just not on the same wavelength. And I'm just like, I understand you're trying to teach a technique with, with the drawing of the thing. But when we have to work on this drawing of the thing for a couple weeks in a row. And like she wanted us to pick like an ordinary object, for example, and draw it. But like draw a super huge close-up of it like super zoomed in I would have done better if I could have like taken a photo and then blown the photo up and then worked from that because the lighting would have been the exact same every time in the photo instead of having to worry about you know lighting in a classroom setting changing day to day depending on you know atmospheric conditions outside if somebody was missing in the class sitting next to you that day like and there was one person in the class that could do absolutely no wrong whatsoever and it was a little frustrating because I'm just like they never got reprimanded like not really reprimanded they never got criticized shall we say um, everything they did, they were just fawning over that particular person. And I'm like, okay, so they're good at drawing. That's fine. We all have our strengths, but that level seemed a little, a little much, um, to me at that time. And, you know, she'd come over and look at my, my stuff. She's like, it's bad. And, and I'm just like, thanks, you too. And, um... It just, it, it wasn't, it was very frustrating. Like that kind of killed my, my want to do things for a while. And I'm like, but, but art is what you make it, right? Like, like I could take this pair of scissors, shove it through this or glue it onto there and be like, Mixed media. I'm done. Like, that that could be art to some people. It probably is. Um, some people would be, like, standing there looking at it and contemplating it. And, like, what could it mean? Does it mean this? Does it mean that? It literally means I glued a pair of scissors to the middle of it because I got mad. Like, <laughs> but they'll be, like, looking for meaning and stuff. And I'm just, like, you're judging my ability to draw a paperclip. In light that's constantly changing when we only have like an hour to work on this a day and and I'm just like it, it just kind of killed my my want to pursue things like that and for a while it, it really did and I just was like and then I got to the point where I'm like fuck it I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do because I, I wasn't gonna get into art school I already knew that there was no money to go to art school, so the, there was, and I wasn't gonna go student loan route because uh, it just it, that wasn't gonna happen. Um, so I was like, yeah, okay. And um, this was also before a lot of a lot of technology came about. You know, I grew up in the '80s, like. I'm, I'm an 80s and 90s kid, so I grew up as computers were becoming more of a thing and more commonplace in internet. Like, I went through the whole dial-up internet thing and, and all of that. So, I think it's a lot, it's sort of better now because you have so many more, um, 
the resources and, you know, programs and stuff. I would have loved to have learned digital art in school. I suck at digital art. I suck at it. Like, I don't understand what half the programs are trying to tell me. Husband tried to teach me a couple of times and, and I was like having a meltdown when he was teaching me how to do vector art. Yeah, we have the same. We grew up with like art magazines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The banana on the wall makes you cringe. <laughs> you have first in, in fine art and yeah, yeah, no, fine art was just, I'm more of, I guess, an abstract artist, but like then it got to the point where you know you weren't seeing like like youtube really wasn't a thing yet so um you know you would just create for the sake of creating and there were so many nights um that i was up till like 2 or 3 a.m just like lost in in a canvas that was almost as tall as me i, I think i'm how tall am i i'm like five three five two somewhere around in there um and uh, there'd be, a, I'd, I'd buy canvases at the place that I worked at. I worked for a craft store, which was lovely. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I liked, I liked working there and I loathed working there. I liked working there because um, I got to see all of the stuff. And, and I got to pick the other people that worked there. I got to pick their brains and be like, well, what's this do? You know, and, and what do you use this for? And there was um, a lady that was their classroom coordinator that would, you know, get teachers to, to come in and, and, you know, do classes. And sometimes once in a while she would teach a class, but she also did a lot of the, the floor displays um, for some of the products in the store. And so I would like, hey, so what are you doing with that? And, you know, and I'd be like, you know, just kind of picking all of their brains, just trying to absorb all of, all of the information, you know, oh, what's this? You know, every time a new product came in, I was all excited. I was like, oh, what, what is this? What is this? What is this? And, um, learned how expensive paintbrushes can be and, uh, <laughs> and all that. But love your rant. You, my era. We know art makes art and, and it was simple. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, and it was just, it was fun. And then, and like, so budget, budget was a big thing for me. Um, didn't make a lot of money working there. Uh, I was a merchandiser for a while and then I ended up doing front end stuff. So, and you know, uh, uh, family life was, I was still living at home cause you know, wasn't making enough where we lived to live on my own. Um, that's the way it was and it still is kind of <laughs> and uh, it, it was my escape to to get rid of to get away from everything to block everything else out um, it, it was what I did like I did scrapbooking for a little while that was that was my diary that was my journal that was my emotions getting out that that needed to get out when I was in shitty places I, I would do um, I've got three different scrapbooks and they're like the 12 by 12 scrapbooks like we all have to work through our own shit, right? So um, we all work through it in different ways. So I know like a lot of people are like, oh, write down your feelings. Uh, I, I'm not good at, at that. Like I can retell things I've been through, but that's not really, you know, writing down what happened that day or, or, um, or, or feelings and stuff. So I started scrapbooking and I didn't have a lot of pictures. I still don't have a lot of pictures of me. I, what pictures I have are pictures that were taken of me that I was obviously not happy that my picture was being taken in, um, except for like a couple. And um, even now, even though we have digital camera, there's like no pictures of me, it's pictures of other stuff. And, and I'm okay with that. But um, I didn't scrapbook with pictures, I scrapbooked feelings and I know that sounds weird but I would actually you know to me music is a lot music can convey all kinds of emotions and feelings and you know it can make you really happy and, and jazzed up or it can just hit you a certain way and bring a flood of memories back that maybe you don't want to relive but but you kind of need to and um, I would sit down and music that spoke to me and this was before we could look up song lyrics online or download the mp3 so um 
it, it got to a point where um, you could start to buy an individual song later on towards my end of my foray into that um, off of like Amazon or places but you know usually you had to go and get the entire thing so you would get the little books that came with the disc if you were lucky or the tape for that matter and um, sometimes they would have the lyrics in if not you kind of had to listen and guess so and I would write down every song lyric to music that spoke to me either in a good way or a bad way or you know a cathartic way and I would hand hand write them out on little pieces of cardstock with gel pens and then I would like make little frames around them and stick them in order like on these big 12 by 12 pieces of paper and sometimes I had stickers that you know went along with the feeling along the sides but that's how I kind of dealt with the more uh, emotionally messy side of things but you know that was great that was art in and of itself <laughs> you want to see your art honestly you cool you honest it's great <laughs> oh thanks um, I have some art um, I have some art galleried on Kofi on my Kofi page um, some of it's, you know, what what we've done, well, a lot of it's what we've done on stream. Um, I'm going to be taking a break from stabbing things soon. When we get done this one, um, we're going to work on the flamingo, I think. We're, we're going to take a break and we're going to paint. And uh, we're going to we're gonna work on the flamingo. This is super zoomed in and I'm sorry, but that's like the flamingo head that I've gotten traced out. Don't pay attention to this. This was me trying to get ideas out that weren't working and didn't erase all the way we'll we'll clean that up later but um but uh i can just sub over that and we can re we can redo or we just paint over it i just i really need to get in there with a good eraser but um but yeah i still have all my guidelines and stuff the paint will cover it but i think we'll we'll paint on this i'm thinking of doing a a whimsical whimsical background and then maybe more of a more serious flamingo in the front but um, I don't have a lot of pictures of the stuff I've done I have some pictures um, I do a lot of sunsets or I did do a lot of sunsets and um, I hit this funk where um, where I, I was on a budget you know I'd buy canvases on employee discount and I would buy the cheapest paint I could because that's what I could afford. So I was buying the craft paint, you know, like the 50 cent a bottle craft paint um, over in like the unfinished wood section of, of the craft store. And um, and I loved the flow of it. You know, I could use sponges and I did use sponges and um, just all sorts of things. And, and I would, you know, sometimes use some stencils and, and then outside opinion started to filter back in where you would see people painting in, in YouTube videos again and they're like oh well you know you have to use this level of paint you have to use this artist grade, grade level of paint and oh it needs to be it needs to be the tubes of, of the artist paint and over in the fine art section and, and I'm just sitting there and I'm like how much money do you have Oh, why did I time that up? Oh, what happened? What? Oh. Moobot. What are you doing, Moobot? Moobot's getting sassy. Hang on. Moobot. Did you just... Moobot, what are you doing? I gotta open Moobot. Moobot's being pissy. Sorry about that. Hold on, let, let me hide this. I'm not sure. I hope it didn't ban you. Moobot. Let's go to message filters.
Let's see if we can fix that. Mubot's just being pissy. What's the 600 second? Yeah, now, now I'm in a, another rabbit hole. Hold on. 60. Six hundred divided by really? No bot. No. How do you undo a timeout? Can you undo a timeout? I'm not that good with this shit. I'm not that tech savvy. There we go, I found it. Haha. -ha. Alright, I think I took off the... I think I fixed the Moobot. So, you should be able to type now. Hopefully you're still here. Hopefully you didn't leave because Moobot was being overdramatic. And... And shit. Yes, you've been liberated. I figured out how to do it. I'm not that tech savvy, you guys. And I think I fixed... I think I fixed why Moobot was getting pissy. Doing stuff on the fly. Okay, no. I don't want anybody else posting links. That's fine. Um, Alright, we turned off caps. That's fine. Turn that off. Turned that off. Turned that off. Okay, it should be good. So. <laughs> Alright, I think that's that's better. Alright, I think I fixed it. So sorry about that. Moobot's just... Moobot's getting carried away here today. My goodness. Give Moobot a little bit of power. Moobot's just running with it. Anyhow. So, um, back to what I was saying. So yeah, like, and then, you know, it's like, people are like, kind of gatekeeping, making art almost. And then I started to question myself and I'm like, I don't have money to buy <laughs> these, these big ass tubes of, of artist paint. And then when I did get them, I didn't like them. They were thick. They were goopy. They didn't flow like the other paints I had did. They dried super fast. And they had a weird shine to them when they were dry and it was almost creating a glare off of what I was working on. And I'm like, I don't really like this is this is what And I came became really self conscious. Yeah, you know, and I, I just, I hit this mental place where I got really self-conscious about, you know, oh, well, I, I guess what I'm doing is not good enough. Um, and I know that's ridiculous, but like now I, I know that's ridiculous, but I just, I didn't think that, you okay? Uh, yeah, your mom's just sending me Sonic. <laughs> Um, out in the dining room, I think in the bottom of the bookcase, maybe, mm -hmm. there's a blue scrapbook. Um, Sweetie, I'm going to be honest, at this point, you'd probably be better off finding yourself. Yeah. Because... I'm not entirely sure what you're asking for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got a lot of, lot of uh, leftover stuff. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. Okay, guys, give me one second. I'll be right back. One second.
actually put my hands on that faster than I thought I was going to. Uh, can I get a cherry slushie? Yeah. Okay. And uh, maybe a pretzel stick, if that's possible. Okay, so you do want something? Yeah. Nice? Yeah. Just just a pretzel stick, if that's okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> oh my goodness. So, ooh. Ooh, this, this outside cover has seen better days. So, oh, we got on the inside too. That's sad. Oh, wow, some of these are like kind of, wow, I forgot I had done, so oh, there's more in here than I thought it there was. Okay. Oh. Yeah, some of this is damaged. Okay. Ew, I have no idea what's on this, but I might have to get rid of that. Alright. So, I'm back. But, um... So yeah, like, I really started to second-guess myself. But then I decided, no. We're not gonna... Just trying to get this the suggestion of this weave put in here. We might have to add in a little bit of our light denim color into it too. Not a whole lot, but you know, a little bit. I do feel a divot that we're kind of putting in here, so we'll probably reflatten the back. So it's nice to meet you from the other side of the pond anyway, we cool. Cool, cool. Nice to meet you too. So I did remember that I have some cringy old art that we can look at for a second. Um Excuse the grossness of the book that it's in, apparently. Something got all over it. Don't know what it was. Looks like water damage or something, so. Cringy, cringy old art! Who's ready for cringy old art? I'm ready for cringy old art. Part of our art journey, right? We all have that stuff that we cringe about. So there's gonna be a little bit of a light glare from the lamp that I've got going. So I was in a real big full metal alchemist phase for a while. Uh, yeah, it is brave. It does make you feel really vulnerable when you show, like, old stuff, even if it was bad. Um, so I I'm terrible at doing people. Absolutely terrible. People are not my forte at all. Not my wheelhouse. But I was trying. And um, so I, I did, uh, I tried to do a, a Reza Hawkeye. Um, she's actually not that bad, uh, all things considered. This, this was eons ago. Um, and I did an owl. And these were um, colored in in uh, looks like micron and colored pencil. And then this this is really bad, <laughs> really bad. So that was um, in in Ed Elric. I think these were Prismacolor pencils. Um, let me see if I can get up on in here without. There we go in the, looks the camera zoomed in, so, I mean, there, there's my hand, so that's about how big that one was, um, that one's just creepy, so I don't know if I really want to show that one, um, I did a full-on pencil, like I said, this was from years ago, oh god, how, this was like from 15, 16 years ago, um, <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, th this one, this one's creepy looking, but um, this one was like mostly, um, mostly Micron. This one was Micron and Graphite. Um, this was colored pencil. If I can get it in the camera view. And let's see, I've got a couple more in here. Um, what is this one? This one. What, what did I do this in anyway? Hang on, let me touch it. Chalk pastel is what that one is. I thought it looked smudgy, and I'm like, it might be chalk pastel. Yeah, that's chalk pastel. Um, and this one looks to be chalk pastel too, along with a bonus dog hair on the plastic. Yeah, that's chalk pastel. I like to use chalk pastels, but I don't like the way they make my fingers feel. Make my fingers so dried out. Um, what was this one? This might have been pastel too. Yeah, that was pastel. And um, this one was all micron pen. I was in this thing where I loved like tree bark texture and stuff for a while. It's a little big, so I'm trying to get it in the camera view without it. Me having to touch the zoom on the camera because I have to manually zoom it in with OBS. Um, there was another Full Metal Alchemist one there. Uh, this one was just uh, color swatches. I like to do these a lot. Um, this is another chalk pastel. I, I like to do this a lot with paint, where I will just do color color puddles, I guess, um, and just, you know, whatever shape strikes my fancy. And sometimes I will go back and line them in either white or black as well. So this one I didn't line, I just did the colors. And um, this one was another uh, Ed Elric. Is that what's mostly in here? Oh, okay. I've got, I think I only have a couple more in here. We've got yeah, I really I loved that tree. You're brave as shit. I don't think I would do this, but I love seeing it. Yeah, you know, like some people do like sketchbook. Um, oh, there's my reflection. Hi. Um, a lot of people like do sketchbook tours and stuff. I don't really have a sketchbook that I keep everything in. Like my sketchbook's kind of like half-ass started projects that were never finished kind of thing. Um, that was an ink. Uh, I think it was just micron pen with owl without being colored in. And then this was another owl. Um, pen and uh, colored pencil. And then this was just me dicking around with colored pencils. And looks like, is that it? One last one. That one was really bad. Really bad. I don't know what happened to his neck there. It just is non-existent. So that one's rather embarrassing. But like I said, people are not my forte. But um, I have no idea what the hell is all over the outside of that book. It looks like something spilled on it. So I'll probably have to pull all of that out of there at some point. But, um, but those ones, I guess, were the ones I felt good enough about to pull out of whatever sketchbook I was working in. And um, I mounted them in that to, uh, to hold on to them. But... Um, but yeah, so I, I like you know it, art. Art is a journey, and we do improve the more we work on stuff. But yeah, I got really self-conscious for a while about using you know cheap craft paint, and and then kind of was like, oh well, you know, I'm I'm not good enough to to even consider being, you know calling myself an artist and shit and um and then something changed and I don't know what but I think I just missed doing stuff like because I had stopped doing stuff again for another period of time altogether I just my head wasn't there and you can't force shit to happen right either either it's gonna happen or it's not and if you try to force it it, it doesn't usually go well and 
I was second guessing all of my decisions and things and and then something happened and I wanted to get back into doing stuff again trying to find my center again and then I decided you know what fuck them and <laughs> I'm gonna do what I want to do fuck everybody and um in the nicest sense possible but I was like I'm going to do what I want to do. And now I like to work with stuff that is kind of outside the norm of what people generally work with. I really like, I really like working with the cheap craft paint. So I had to, I had to, um, rebuild my, my craft paint supplies Unfortunately, fortunately, um, the craft paint is cheap, so I can do that on, on a budget. I have a couple artist tubes of colors that I go through a lot, and I have a couple of, of artist tubes like Liquitech Basic level, um, like white and black, that I can mix into the other colors um, to just, you know, bulk them up a little bit or to, to tone down some other colors. Um, just to stretch them a little bit further, but I, I like working with those. Um, I, I'm, I'm kind of, my hands are in everything now, so um, I really like working with tissue paper, and I know that sounds bizarre as hell, um, but like when we were in, well, when I was in school, um, a lot of times they would make us do um, uh, construction paper stained glass so we would get like a piece of black construction paper and we'd have to like cut out like shapes and stuff in the inside of it and then we would tape um, uh, tissue paper to the back to cover the holes and then you know you'd hang it up on on the um, the window and then the light would come through and then kind of look like a half-assed version of stained glass and um, <laughs> art is alchemy you insert talent into something that is worthless and then you make something look uh you make something amazing well i mean it's what we're all trying to do right um something to to be to be proud of and to be satisfied with and i'm never satisfied with my stuff though i, I am my own worst enemy in, in that regard but um it, it's also it's a good thing to an extent because then as long as you can see where where you could have done something differently or try something different next time um as long as it's like moving in that direction then it has more of a purpose i guess to to motivate you to um, try to to make it a little different maybe try a different technique next time at least on the failed stuff um but i took it a different step so um i i take tissue paper and i cut it down into little squares um, let me see here. I've got a huge, not huge, but I've got a bunch of drawers next to me with my art supplies in them. Well, some of the art supplies. So, take tissue paper, right? I know this has nothing to do with what we're working on today. And, uh, I cut it down, either by hand or with a paper trimmer, into like, not, it's not exact science measurement here, into small, maybe half inch, one inch, Type squares roughly um, and then after I do that then I figure out you know okay well what colors are we gonna put in this then I twist them now this one's pretty prep heavy so then I twist them into little paper snakes kind of like how we're twisting these at times um, then we get like these little tiny paper snakes and this is like what it was and then this is what it became and then you know, I'll glue them down on a piece of canvas with like tacky glue and make a, a piece with that. And, and I love the tissue paper because it's a fairly inexpensive product, right? Um, it's definitely, I mean, the glue gets a little pricey sometimes if you need a lot of it, but tacky glue is not that expensive um, in the long run. And Mod Podge, you can usually get with um, a coupon at like your your big art 
chains and stuff so you can get like you can make it worth it and get like the big bottle with like a 40 off coupon and then that'll last you a while um so like i do tacky glue as a base and then like i'll, I'll sketch out actually for the for the tissue paper stuff i've started doing like a rough underpainting on them just so i didn't have to uh constantly have my reference photo out so i kind of kind of like a color guide like a cheat sheet of where i wanted the colors to go and then um And then gluing the tissue paper in in different in different configurations so like sometimes it's the little paper snakes sometimes it's like rolled up in little tiny flower pieces um, like little snail shell circles um, sometimes I just smush it in there to try to get like a leaf or bush texture and we do have um, I did do that on stream uh, a couple times so there should be no, we did it one time on stream. The other one was a video that I did off stream. Um, so there's two projects with that on the YouTube channel archived on the um, on the Nisi Paints playlist. They're probably closer to the top. Um, and the one we actually did follow a Bob Ross tutorial with while while using tissue paper, um, just just for something different. And um, so like I would glue everything down and then once it was dry and finished, then I'd go back with the Mod Podge on top just to kind of seal it all in. Um, I didn't do any sealer on top of the Mod Podge though because I kind of figured Mod Podge would be enough. But um, I was also afraid that sometimes when Mod Podge gets wet stuff on top of it again, it can get a little milky. So I was kind of afraid to put any other sealant on top of it. I could have not Mod Podged it and just seal um, like acrylic sprayed it, but I wanted to make sure everything was good and, and attached to itself in there. But uh, like I, I love working with that, and um, and then I, I love working with yarn. Like I'm not good at knitting. I'm I'm not good at cross stitch. Uh, my grandfather at one point tried to teach me needlepoint that really didn't work so well I kind of like doing latch hook rugs kind of I've dabbled a little bit in Sculpey um, not a whole lot I'm by no means know what the fuck I'm doing I'm just kind of stumbling along with that and um, I I'm, I'm kind of everywhere we did the one piece where I was kind of rushed through it um, with the with reusing the the plastic water bottles where we cut the bottoms off and uh, made like flowers out of the bottoms of them um, I probably should have just plastered the entire canvas with them probably would have looked better next time if I do that again I will do that um, I've dabbled a little bit in gouache and in fact, my first gouache piece, I was actually pretty, pretty happy with. Um, let me see if I can find that image. I think it is in this folder. Yes, it is. Are we going to see that one? Yeah, there we go. So that was a, my first ever foray into gouache. If it pops up on the screen, there it goes. Um, I really liked that. It almost, like in person, it almost had a, a velvety um, texture to it. it. It's hard to describe it. It just, it didn't really look like paint. It kind of looked like flocking. Um, like that you would see like inside like a jewelry box like the soft little fuzzy stuff um, it's not it didn't feel like that at all but it just it kind of had this like rich look to it and I really did like that um, so that was fun that was on watercolor paper I had watercolors but for some reason and and it's so silly watercolors intimidate the fuck out of me I, I don't know why 
but they do. I that they're not my my elements. Um, they shouldn't intimidate me, but they do. I think it's because I know I can't go back over it and fix it. Like I can with acrylic paint. Like you fuck up with acrylic paint, you can just paint over it, right? Um, with watercolor, you're kind of you're kind of in there. So, um, I mean, you could like use colored pencil to try to try to bring something back if it started to to take a turn and um, and whatnot. And I did buy acrylic paint or um, watercolor, but I don't know, for some reason watercolor just scares the shit out of me and I get so nervous trying to deal with it. We do have some oil paint. Um, I've only ever really followed the Bob Ross tutorials with that. I did one piece um, that wasn't streamed or recorded. I don't record everything. Um, and I kind of, it came out okay. Um, it could have gone a little better and looking at it I do see some things I would like to change if I ever tried to do it again but um, I haven't touched my oil paints in, in a while I'm not even sure if they're still good to be perfectly honest um, but it's been a while since we've painted on the channel so I kind of want to get back into painting I think our last painting we did was the butterfly hang on it's super dusty let me wipe it off it's just been kind of sitting there so like the last the last painting we did was this one on the channel if memory serves I think we did this coming into Christmas where um, we painted everything in and then we kind of gave it like a mosaic tile look I like doing stuff like that too where did that piece of glitter come from oh my goodness I hate glitter so much I try not to use it very often. And I've been traumatized with glitter. Absolutely traumatized. Um, from working in the, uh, in the craft store for, uh, six years. Um, especially towards the end when I was on, uh, register my entire shift oh oh there were days <laughs> where it was it was bad it was bad I could just stand there and shake my shirt at the end of the day and you could just see it raining down and sparkling through the air where I was standing and I was like leaving a puddle of glitter all over the floor it was awful it was in my hair it was on my face it was oh it was in my shoes it was terrible absolutely terrible because especially well uh, okay it wasn't like that all year round but it was like that during fourth quarter um fourth quarter retail shopping season so coming into to christmas so like from October no not October from August to maybe January um, I can't really say it stopped in December like after Christmas because sometimes the if there was any Christmas stuff left over it would be on clearance so then we still had to deal with the glittery shit um, after December for a little bit but like all of the flower stems and the Christmas decorations and oh it was bad <laughs> traumatized by glitter oh like even now when I do need to use it for something I'm just like Ugh. like really really trying to be super careful about where it goes and 
six months later, you're still fucking finding it. So. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, I never finished my story. So, um, yeah, so my ears are, like, super sound sensitive. My dad would love to go to these, um, to, uh, the amateur boat races when they were in town or close by since he couldn't go and, uh, do the, um, driving anymore because he had to sell his boat and everything. And I think, I think part of him always missed it. And, um, I don't think he ever really wanted to give that aspect of his life up, but he kind of got backed into a corner and kind of had to. Um, and I don't know if he was resentful about it, but you can tell that he, it's definitely a part of his life that he misses, um, or wished he could have done longer, but, um, he would take me when I got old enough, or he'd be like, you want to go, and, you know, I guess because, you know, somebody wanted to do something with me, because both parents were constantly working, so, you know, I'd be like, yeah, okay. So, um, usually you had to buy special tickets to get into the, like, the pit area where they would work on the boats on the trailers, and they would start the boats on the trailers. Well, he knew, he knew everybody in the pits, so it was like wink and a nod and an elbow shake, elbow bump, you know, and it's like, just, just come with me. And they would, like, usher you in. because they still saw him as one of them, so they're like, no. So, like, the people back there on the racing teams, they'd be like, fuck that, just come back here. Um, you know, like, they would, he would catch somebody's eye and they would just kind of shuffle him, I guess, and me back there. Um, but I really wish I had had, um, like, the, the headphones, like, the noise-canceling headphones that uh, people will wear to like car races and stuff same sort of scenario where it's just so loud um, Just to like kind of muffle the noise cuz you know out of nowhere They would just be like working on a boat and just start it and then you just hear this like loud like rawr, rawr, and I'm like, oh god, so it was very very um, Jarring to, to my ears and very loud and I wasn't a fan but um, You know kind of stuck there for the day and kind of had to, to deal with it, but uh, to this day, my my ears detest loud noises. I made the mistake in going to one concert. I have been to exactly a concert in my life. Um, never again. <laughs> never again. Um, I, uh, I saw my favorite band at the time. I mean, they're still on my favorite list, but are they my all-time favorite? I don't know if they're my all-time favorite, but we'll, we'll definitely rank them within, like, the top five. Um, so I got the opportunity to see Sister Hazel live. Um, they had come to uh, one of the casinos that, um, in Atlantic City where I was living, like, that general area. Um, and, uh, Oh, my ears were shot. It was so loud. It was painfully loud. When we got out of there, I couldn't hear my friend talking and she was like standing right next to me. She had to like scream to me. I'm like, I can't hear you. It took me like almost a week to recover. That that was pretty bad. And after that, I'm like, yeah, no, I'm done. I'm not going to concerts anymore. That that was painful my poor ears and then the first time we flew first time I flew um oh gosh how old was I 16 17 first time I was on an airplane we didn't have a lot of money and um my sister kind of my half sister at the time when she was speaking to us um conned my mom into letting me go somewhere with her if she would watch her cats or something. It's a whole convoluted story, tell you that much. And, um, 
that was the first time I was on an airplane. And looking back on it, I kind of... I kind of knew what was going on and, and kind of understood that I was just a pawn in the whole trip to, um, to get what she wanted from our mom. Um, and in hindsight, if I had it to do all over again, don't know if I would have gone but at the same time even though I was just being used as a manipulation tactic for her to get what she wanted it opened up my love of a place that I probably never would have been to otherwise so I have mixed feelings how I came to love a place, but um, but I still love that place, so I try not to, like, I'm not certainly not going to thank her for, for my love of that place, but um, I don't know, it, it's a weird feeling, it's like, okay, I really hate that, that you're the reason that what you did was the reason that I love this place kind of weirdness it's hard to explain but that trip oh first time I flew my ears got angry again and again I couldn't hear till we were like my recovery time was a little bit faster there but um, when we landed my ears just pain exploded into them and um, I couldn't hear what she was saying to me oh thank you oh you got to be here this snack break brought to you by husband thank you <clears throat> got a pretzel stick and a, a, a slushie cherry slushie but um But, um, yeah, that was super painful. I could not hear what she was saying next to me after we landed. She was talking to me, and I had no idea what the fuck she was saying. Like, I was just kind of staring blankly at her. And she was kind of, like, looking at me, and I think I was getting the feeling of, like, she was, like, asking if I was okay or something. I guess because I wasn't responding the way she thought I was going to. And I just kind of kept shaking my head at her or nodding at her. Like, I couldn't really lead, read her lips very well, so I'm just like, I don't know, where the fuck are we going? I'll just follow you. Um, I don't think I was able to really communicate with her properly until we were maybe to baggage claim. And then I could kind of hear, but everything was like super muffled. And she's like, what's wrong with you? I'm like, I can't hear anything. My ears hurt. So, and I think I had to yell to her. At least I thought I was yelling. I don't know if I really was. But I'm like, I can't hear you. So, I'm not a big fan of flying. I, I haven't flown that many times. I've flown round trip on that, that vacation. Um, the next time I flew was to go visit, oh no, the next time I flew, I went um, back to um, Florida. Uh, took a friend that was my only friend option buddy to go with at the time, cause uh, I was meeting um, someone I had met online that I had talked to for a while in person. And I knew my mom would flip her shit if I tried to meet him back home. 
so we kind of decided, okay, well, let's go meet here. You fly down there, and I'll fly down there, and I'll bring people so we're, we don't have to worry about each other. Because, you know, it, it was the age of, of, you know, scary I met somebody online thing, you know, still dial up internet error, era, and, uh, no, I mean, even now you really need to be careful meeting somebody for the first time that you don't know, but we'd been talking for like over a year, um, at that point, maybe a year and a half, and we were kind of comfortable to move on to the, the next phase of, oh, well, let's meet each other in person sort of thing, and, um, and so I flew for that trip there and back. And then the next time I flew was when I went to go see that same person um, when they moved down south. And that was that was my first time flying alone. That was intimidating. I'm I'm very much a homebody to an extent. Um, when you take me out of my comfort zone and my, my routine that I'm used to, it can get kind of intimidating, very intimidating. And I, I am a bit of an introvert to a degree. Um, don't like large crowds. Don't, don't like to be out and about that much. Um. I mean, I like to be out and about sometimes, but I need a I need a purpose. If I'm just out to be out, then I get a little a little wiggy sometimes. But um, that was that was a whole ass thing, traveling a alone for the first time. Not only was I traveling alone, I was trying to navigate airports I had never ever been in. Changing time zones, trying to catch connecting flights, because there was no direct flight either. That made it even worse. I was kind of just like thrown to the wolves, be like, here you go, have fun. And I'm like, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Somebody help me. So um, <laughs> that was all sorts of intimidating. Like they really should like give classes on how to navigate life and how to travel safely and and that sort of shit. They don't. They should. But they don't. But, um... Yeah, so I had to... My first time ever flying alone. I had to fly from Atlantic City, New Jersey. And I, my end destination was um, in Northwest Arkansas, right? So, there was no direct flights from where I was and every other flight that I could find was was ridiculous right so my first set of flights was from Atlantic City to Cincinnati and then from Cincinnati I had to fly into Dallas Texas and then from Dallas, Texas, I had to fly back into Arkansas I'm like you literally flew me over the state that I needed to go to <laughs> But you won't let me go there. I have to go over it and then come back. It was ridiculous. And, um... My home wasn't much better. Sorry, I'm just grabbing a little nibble of my pretzel stick real quick because I'm starving. And, uh... The way home, I had to go from Northwest Arkansas to Atlanta, Georgia. And then from Atlanta, Georgia, I had to go to back to Cincinnati. And then from Cincinnati, I had to go back to um, Atlantic City. And I was so scared with time zones and possible flight delays I was, 
I was giving myself all kinds of extra time between flights that I probably didn't need to, but I did not want to get stranded. And I'm like, right, so let's try to give ourselves like three hours between this flight, four hours, and maybe four hours between this flight. And I was so scared on my my Atlanta to Cincinnati leg of the trip because all of my other flights had been like two hours or so and um, up to that point because it had all been on smaller planes like the smaller little commuter jets where it's like two seats on each side and it's like maybe 15 20 rows at the most operated by um, by like third party um, third party characters that were under the uh, characters <laughs> third party um, companies that were under the umbrella of like Delta or whoever um, so I was like oh well this flights like I'm looking at what time we were supposed to land in Cincinnati and what time it was now and I'm thinking okay so you know we did do the time change when I got into Atlanta and I'm like looking at what time my connecting flight is in Cincinnati and I'm trying for some reason I did not seem to understand how long the flight was going to be from Atlanta to Cincinnati I don't know why it just wasn't sinking in or I couldn't find anywhere where that information was listed and I was starting to get super nervous and I was like, oh god, oh god. So I'm kind of like trying to have a quiet meltdown, <laughs> um, if, if that's even such a thing, um, on the on the plane a, as we finally board and um, there's a small child in front of me or next to me. I think they were next to me and they had their adult companion with them. And small, I mean, like, maybe uh, older, excuse me, older than two, but, like, they didn't need to be in, in a car seat or anything. They could be in their own seat, and, I don't know, five, maybe, five or six, um, something like that. And, uh, I'm just kind of trying to quietly sit there and uh, have my little freak out about, oh god, I'm not going to make my next flight. I'm not going to make my next flight because I'm looking at the times and I'm like, if, if this flight lasts like two and a half hours, I'm, I'm not going to make this next connection and oh my god, what am I going to do? I'm going to have to bolt the second I get off this plane and run for the next gate. And I'm just like sitting there like quietly having a fucking anxiety attack and like kind of like twitching and shaking and I'm like, oh god, oh god, oh god. And then this little kid next to me is like, trying to get me to entertain them and their traveling companion I guess it was maybe an older sibling or something had to be older brother um I was just getting older brother vibes that they put on headphones and was listening to the air traffic control report as far as I could tell and just totally ignoring the younger child this was not dad this was not young dad vibes this was this was um I can't believe my mom is making me tr you know, chaperone you somewhere, older sibling vibes, that, that's what I was getting, and, um, I was just like, oh god, now I, now I can't even have my quiet meltdown and, and nervously sit here and twitch in peace, I've got to entertain a small child, and I'm like, no, I, like, kept trying, I felt bad for the kid, and I'm just, like, trying to, to ignore them, I'm trying to, like, put my head in my music, I'm trying to, to just distract myself, and then they're like, oh yeah, so today's flight will be 45 minutes, and I'm like, what? <laughs> and I kind of froze. I had never been on a plane this big either. Um, it was like a full, like, it was like a full ass big plane. Like it wasn't one of these like two, two rows of seats on either side and like one middle aisle. This was like seats in the middle, side aisles. This was like a full ass, like Boeing, whatever. And I'm like, okay so this is happening and I, I was just flabbergasted that we were being put on a plane this big for a 45 minute plane ride and I'm like what 
<laughs> it, it just, it floored me. And I, so the whole time I'm just like still kind of weirded out that I'm like, are, are you sure this is really only going to be like a 45 minute flight? Cause I've got another flight to catch and, um, yeah. So then to prevent that madness from happening again, I really stretched out my layovers the next time I flew, um, to, to go see my, my internet friend who ended up becoming my husband. And, um, at the time they were still internet friend. And that time I didn't have, I only had the one layover that time. I didn't have two. So that was helpful. However, my one layover ended up being, um, I think because of delays ended up being like almost six hours. And I was running on like two hours of sleep. So the anxiety of travel, plus we were up late the night before I had to leave talking because um, neither one of us really wanted me to go. and But I had to or else there was going to be hell to pay and, and stuff if I didn't get back. Um, I couldn't just say fuck it and, and not go back at that point. I, I had to go back. Um, and uh, walking around in an airport for like four to six, I think it was six hours, um, on like two hours of sleep, I was trying to buy all of the snacks. I was trying to like load up on so much sugar and candy and caffeine. And I'm just like, I need some Mountain Dew. I need some, like all of the things just to, cause I'm not a coffee drinker. Um, I was sorely tempted to try, but, uh, I just, I can't stomach the, the bitterness of coffee 90% of the time and, um, just, just couldn't do it. And, uh, every time I went to sit down, like my eyes were like drooping closed. I'm like, oh no, 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 you can't fall asleep here. Cause you've got nobody with you to wake your ass up when they call the flight. So I was doing just a lot of like pacing and uh, walking in circles and I think I bought a book to try to read to keep me awake and then I'm like oh that's that's not gonna work I never did fall asleep like I figured I'd like pass out the second I got on the plane and I was okay if that happened because I was going to my final destination so I was like okay you know that that's cool 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 um, but I, I couldn't sleep on a plane I got way too hyped up once I got on there because I like I just I wanted to be home at that point and um, but you know all the things and stuff but uh, I hate flying I'm a very nervous flyer I haven't flown since our honeymoon yeah so I think I've only flown like a handful of times and my ears are much happier for it but um, but yeah so we don't fly anymore. Um, we didn't really love our, our last plane trip when we were on our honeymoon. The, the seats were cramped, so we didn't like having to um, deal with that many other people crowded in around us, um, being at the mercy of a flight schedule. Just, just didn't like it, and we didn't like that you know, we, we couldn't get up early and move around or, or take a break on the way. So we, we drive everywhere now. Um, with our schedules or lack thereof, um, it's a little bit easier to make that happen. Um, but I know not everybody can drive everywhere and if you like to fly hey more seats for you but um, it just works better I mean it is probably more expensive to drive because then you have to do um, hotels and stuff but for us it adds to the adventure and we get to see things along the way and
that sort of thing. We, we kind of, even though the past couple of road trips that we had to go on, like, because we had to move my parents separately on a couple of occasions, um, which meant us driving from Arkansas back to New Jersey, that, that was, and back. I mean, that was a whole ass thing, but um, that was stressful because of what we knew we had to do. But even though it was stressful, we still kind of both miss the um, the way that the road trips would break up the monotony, as it were. Um, but uh, we got a pretty kick-ass, well, for us, a pretty kick-ass digital camera um, that we didn't have on our last trip to Florida when we went in 2018 and um, we really want to go back so that we can go back to SeaWorld and take some awesome photos. We'd love to SeaWorld. I know it gets a little bad rap about a lot of things, but I would go to SeaWorld any day over, over Disney. I think Disney's way, way overpriced, personally. But then again, budget's a huge deal for us. Huge, huge deal. And, um, we had a, a lovely hotel right next door to SeaWorld. We were able to walk over from our hotel. So we didn't have to pay for parking. We got tickets half price. But we did decide if we do end up, um, I think, oh, I grabbed the wrong color. Uh, if we do manage to get back, we're going to do um, an all-day dining pass. So that way we can eat however much we want. And get as many drinks as we want. I mean, you're restricted like a, f a full meal inside in a... Like a sit-down place, like a quick service sit-down. Um, like once an hour or something. And then you can like get a drink refill like every 15 minutes or some shit and I'm like hell yeah like we would have been there till park close if we had had that um, last time and really gotten the most out of our money but um, we didn't stay that long so it was towards the end of our trip and we were we were tired and it looked like it was gonna rain and I had stuffed animals <laughs> that we were carrying around that I had gotten as souvenirs so I didn't want them to get wet because all we had was this um, like brown bag that they had given us that the top was open on and I'm like hmm and we didn't have an umbrella so but next time we go back we want to take the kick-ass camera with us and get some photos and we want to take our kick-ass camera back to um, Key West holds well, a special place for both of us we we got married there we we had our first vacation getting to know each other there. And um, I'd love to take that to the Butterfly Conservatory that they've got down there. You can walk through. They've got two resident flamingos, at least at this point in time, that live in there. I think on Fridays they do a special program where you can do um, a special meet and greet early before um, regular guests come in to, um, I don't think you feed the flamingos, but I think you get to get up close with them. Some sort of flamingo encounter where it's like a very small group of people, like five or six or something. And I think they only do it on like one day a week. Hi, Zuzu. Oh, no. He was there. Zuzu was next to me. And then he walked away. So I've got some breaks of this orange trying to poke through here. to 
can deal with that here in just a minute. So I added a little bit of our our denim color, our like lighter denim color. Oh, excuse me, allergies are bad. Um, I'm trying terribly not to rub my eyes because they're itchy. So I think we'll grab a little bit of our light blue. And I know we didn't get a whole lot done today, but we got some stuff. I mean, it took a little bit to get that worked in. This is not a quick medium to work with. For me, at least. This is the light blue, but it looks almost white when you pull it out strand by strand. So that might be what we're using as our full on highlight color here. Don't want this super thick. So I'm just kind of twisting this guy. Hey, Mrs. Rock Girl. How are you? How's your DIY project going? Alita did add your name to the list, by the way. I'm gonna let this get a little bit thicker in spots. Kind of try to encourage it to be a little uneven here. You know, water kind of peaks and valleys. the moonlight to kind of catch the top edge of this. Fine, thanks. You're just cutting the doorway into the kitchen from the hall. Cheers. Thanks for that. Yeah, no problem. No problem. Trust me, the more help we can get with testing for Dragonflight, the better. Because for Shadowlands, it was it it was a lot. Like there was a lot of pressure on us for I think the five of us that I know of that were helping. Because we were doing that on top of everything else that we were trying to do, so it, it was it was it was a lot. Um, and there was a lot of pressure to get through each challenge um, instead of just focusing on our strong challenges so you know you had my dumb ass trying to <laughs> trying to test iron play when I don't play irons that much so um, and trying to, to test green man and because green man's basically bloodthirsty with quests and you know that sort of thing and trying to get different perspectives on different challenges as best as we could. I'm trying to keep my arm out of the way, but I kind of, I'm right handed, so this hand needs to go in this direction to hold this just for a second. Maybe we'll bring this back again this way. Just to fill that in a little bit more. Like I said, we did have some some orange splitting through and peeking up from our base there. And we'll probably take some of this white or white this the sky blue it looks white on these colors um and try to stripe it in here through the base as we're going so yeah no we're happy to have all the help that we can get Uh, 
Oh, do make sure that you've opted in for beta testing on the World of Warcraft website. Because I can't guarantee... Um, I can't guarantee that she'll get tester keys ahead of time or how many she will get. But this way, at least if you are on the beta opt-in, you'll be able to get in at some point. Okay, good. And um, once she gets the dock organized and sorted and we get closer to um, alpha testing, then she'll probably be sending out the Google Doc invitations to everyone. So I think the test team right now, I know um, the husband volunteered. He helped a little bit last time. Um, me, Fair, um, another, um, the owner of No Harm Done, uh, Annette, that challenger, um, Rusty from Discord, and you, um, I'm not sure if any of the other mods have time to. Zaya might be, so he can um, see the code and stuff to try to get things sorted for that. But yeah, like the more testers that we have in our arsenal or at our disposal, um, the easier or the faster we can get feedback put together as, you know, builds change and stuff, um, for the coders and for Lita and Stir, so they can figure out, um, potential rule changes and whatnot. So, like, I'll be having to do a lot of looking from bloodthirsty standpoint, um, quests and things. Um, do we need to allow quests here or there? How do we get to the new X-Pack area? And, and that sort of stuff. That's not looking too bad. Looks a little weird, but it's gonna because, you know, the medium that we're working in. So it's gonna be a thing. So I'm just trying to rub the back of this. I keep seeing that light flicker. Either the light bulb is loose or something. I hope the light... It should be an... I thought it was an LED bulb, but it might not be. It's a daylight bulb, I know that. I don't have the money for the expensive, like, ring light studio setup that a lot of people do. Like, th that money is just not there, so lighting's not the greatest. I had a shop light dome, so uh, that we tried to get a light bulb that would work with the cameras as or the camera uh, options that we had as best as we could. So I'm going to take a little bit of this light blue color here. Just trying to get some wispy guys worked into that. bit of trimming here again as we kind of like we don't want to overdo it but we do want some strands here where it appears that 
the light is hitting a little bit of this. Honestly, I think I'm doing this backwards, actually. I probably want this trim line at the top. Because it would probably be not that bright at the bottom. It would be like a more solid line towards the top and the crest of this. More than anything. There we go. Me and my backwards brain. That's a little better. Be guys in here. Sorry, I'm going over this section again because like I said we've had some some orange trying to break through here in spots. I'm just trying to minimize that a little bit. As I keep putting my hand in the way when it doesn't need to be. Just got some wispy doos over here that are just kind of sitting on top, so we might as well try to at least anchor them into place. Alright, I'm gonna smooth this out again. Again, you don't need to do this. If you don't want to, I am because I'm developing quite a valley <laughs> where I'm working at at the moment. With um, all of the layers that were tapping in here. Alright, so as I'm half crooked here, let me click off on something. There we go, that's better. I mean, it looks a little weird, but this whole thing's gonna be a little weird. It'll make a little more sense, hopefully, as we go. Right, so I'm just trying to kind of separate this out just a little bit. As we work in this next little wispy section. trying to get this kind of worked in like this doesn't really need to be that heavy in this area just kind of want it to melt in a bit I want to see the other shades in there a little bit Okay, so let's 
Okay, maybe in here. I know we kind of went a little heavy on that side, but. A little bit more of that worked in there. And I am trying to gather up a bit more of our fluff here along this top edge just to kind of, you know, uneven it a little bit, if that makes sense. bit more of a higher quote-unquote white cap in that section and kind of let that shadow fall in underneath of it. Okay, I try not to use the back of my handle doing this because that is how we broke that one needle that time, but I'm trying to be more careful. Again, this is a step that you probably don't need to do, but I find it helps keep things a little bit flatter out here. So let's take a minute. It looks a lot brighter on camera than it actually is because of the light that I have. Lost my whiskey guy. You're a hard one to hold on to, my friend. Right. I'm just gonna kind of try to make this a little more, not really jagged, but I don't really want it like a level line either. to have a little more personality and predictability as moving water tends to have. All right, I'm gonna grab another little ball of fluffiness. All right, so again, I'm using acrylic yarn that we prepped in order to um, get it into a roving like consistency. You can use straight up roving if your budget and um, ability to get it allows. We're using a lot of different colors here. Meow. I hear a kitty. Do you have her or do I do? Take it you have her. No, I have her. Okay. She likes to greet us. That is little. The youngest member of our animal tribe, I guess. They are basically our kids, because we don't have kids, so they are our kids. And like normal human kids, they are eating us out of house and home. Well, the cats are. We've even picked up a couple of stray cats. One of them really, 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 really wants to live inside. So I think either they've spent time indoors before or it's someone's cat that's lost. But now that I'm looking at this cat, I don't think it's lost. I think it's an outdoor cat or a cat that got dumped. They're certainly friendly. Um, they want love. They want cuddles. Um, 
very different personality than the other outside cat that's an outside cat but comes to visit us that we first started feeding. And then this other one just kind of showed up out of nowhere. And I think I vaguely remember the one cat that we were feeding for a while and this cat getting into it in the parking lot across the street one night before um, they started being super friendly with us. And now this cat, the second one, the new one, the white one, the one that we call Nom Noms because all he does is eat, um, he, call, he, he comes bolting across our backyard when he sees us, running over to us and flops down on the ground in front of us. I mean, Christ, we actually had to put flea medication on him. <laughs> Because the dogs were picking up fleas off of him, we think. When they were smelling him outside or they were coming in off my mom or us. We're not going to be able to do that all the time, but he also had a tick on his foot and we didn't think he wasn't friendly enough or we could pin him down to get it off of him because he didn't like to be held. Um, so we had an extra tube when we had to get the flea medication for the inside cats and dogs so we were like um you think we should put it on there and then we saw the tick and we're like yeah we're gonna put this on you buddy it's like i hope i don't think anybody gave you any already because you have a pretty swollen tick on your foot but you're not gonna let us properly get it off of you so this is how we're gonna do it and we don't see the tick anymore so it did drop off because it was between his toes it was very noticeable And we feel bad because he like keeps hanging around the door and throwing himself against it and laying on our doormat like he's waiting to be invited in and I'm like buddy at least one of our male cats w is not happy about you being on the porch he's constantly digging at the window glass and the glass in our front door trying to get at you so I don't think that's gonna work, my friends. And we don't have anyone on their way out that you can take their place, so... Sorry. They'll just have to be our outdoor cat that we make sure that you're fed. We have a blanket on our porch under our one chair. That uh, he frequents from time to time. Don't know where he goes when it rains. Apparently we're not the only family he visits. From what we've been hearing from neighbors I'm like oh yeah i've been feeding him and i'm like why are you coming down acting like you haven't eaten in days if uh, other people are feeding you my friend like every time i turn around you're out there meowing and your food bowl's empty I need, I need this to work how I want it to work. It needs to be wispy. It needs to be airy. I don't want this tight. the suggestion of the light catching it in places. Without it being too super thick. And I know it just looks like one bright mass in the camera. This light is god awfully bright. I can't find a light that's in between. And I don't have much. I mean, you can kind of see the. It's it's subtle. Um, a little bit more of a shadow now with the direction I have the light tilted in, but we're very tight quarters. We don't have much space to work with here.
pretty much the area that you see in the camera is the surface area I have to work with at the moment. I do miss working on big pieces, I just don't have the room to work on the big pieces. And the big canvases are super expensive. It's kind of funny, when I worked at the craft store, I didn't have as many bills to pay as I do now. I would think nothing of of getting a 40% off coupon and grabbing a $50 canvas and dropping the coupon on it. Like, I would think nothing of it. I wasn't doing it every week, but... I did get a couple that way. I ordered a couple, two big ones, um, from somewhere. Where the hell did I order them from? I don't remember. I feel like it was Canvas USA or Art Supplies USA, something like that. And, uh, they came through undamaged, so I wouldn't be opposed to ordering from them again, it's just working that big right now, I just don't have the room to. So, that makes things a little more difficult. Alright, so we're grabbing some of this denim, light denim color. I think it's just denim. I think the other one's dark denim. Alright, so, let's Put in some shadowy things here at the base. Or we'll try to. This one's definitely been a challenge. A little bit more of a pain in the ass than I was thinking it was gonna be, but you know. We're learning. We're trying to figure it out as we go. necessarily have a hard stop time today. I don't have to feed the husband today. And I have leftovers for my dinner since all I grabbed was a snack. That doesn't have to be eaten right away. I'm kind of nibbling on it as we go. So we can probably go a little bit longer. I do still need to do some stream prep for Wednesday. Isn't that exciting, you guys? We're down to four Bloodthirsty Challengers for our World of Warcraft stream. That's super exciting, to me at least. The Warrior's gonna be... Um, a bit of a conundrum because uh, they're going to be leveling all on their own at one point, so I don't know if they might get moved to Record Town. They may. And maybe we'll work on the last level together on live stream. That could be what ends up happening. don't know if I'll be streaming any um, testing. It depends on any disclosure agreements that might need to be done. I don't think they get that fussy about it though. 
alpha might be a little more fussy than beta testing for for wow so i think alpha's played a little bit more close to the best i don't ever remember seeing people told that they were not allowed to stream beta though I'm pretty sure I saw people streaming beta testing at one point or another, so we shouldn't have any issues there. But we'll see. We'll see. Depends on when all that kicks off and where we are with the warrior. We could work on the warrior and then switch to testing. Um, I just don't know. I'll tell you right now, I'm not looking forward to taking that warrior through Shadowlands whatsoever. I'm I'm absolutely dreading it. Mostly based off of how or let's see how to word this. Mostly based off the leveling rate of the other classes that have come through Shadowlands that I've worked on so far. It's, it's gonna be a thing. It's not gonna be quick. Um, I might be able to stretch stream prep out on that one though over a few days. So that might be helpful to the last shreds of my sanity that are remaining. Because uh, I'm working on the druid right now. The druid's the last one I have to finish prepping for this week. And, um, yeah, the, the mobs have gone green where we're at, and my loop is small, but there's, the, the XP is a bit more consistent, even though it's, um, a smaller loop. And they can certainly do it, it's just getting a little mind-numbing at this point because because of how many we've done uh, Fair and I are working on an article for Dark Moon Fair it's not going to be up for this Dark Moon Fair though uh, probably for the July one it should be out in time for. Um, it's just the way timing worked out. Um, because I had to get all of the max level challenger backlog of dings <laughs> that happened while the trackers were down. I had to get those write-ups sorted and dealt with. And those are all done now. We're all up to date. Um, so now I can focus on other things and uh, we were, well I was writing down some of the questions that um, I wanted to ask her about and uh, hang on, I lost my place, where am I? We're back one. Okay, so we need to stay up in here. Okay. Where... There we go. I forgot. I had closed the tutorial. Image, um... Well, I had to go and decrankify Moobot. Because for some reason it's showing everything over there and not just what I want it to show, so. It's showing every window I click on instead of just the YouTube link, so. Oh, um, remember when, I don't know, some of you might have been here for that stream, some of you might not have been. I don't remember what stream I was talking about it on. 
It might have been on an art stream. Um, I had tried to export. Um, I think a Parkitect VOD and um, and a Warcraft leveling VOD for our challenge play over to YouTube, like I normally do. And titles were the same, the description was a little different, tags were different, a little different, I'd added a, an extra tag or two. And about 10 seconds after I had hit public on the video, it was coming up privacy locked, like, and it wasn't really giving me much info as to why, and I'm like, what? Like, I, I went crazy for about an hour and a half trying to fix it like I'm like trying to figure out what what policy are they saying that I I fucked up because uh, it's it's the same as the other ones but you're gonna you're gonna be pissy about this video and not this video like this doesn't make sense and why now when this other video was suddenly up for over a week but because I edited something in the description and saved it it nailed that video as privacy locked and I'm like what the hell is your problem YouTube got an email and I'm looking at the email and it was a very pay very vague um, answer to my question about what the fuck did I do it was like an auto email and they were citing a policy that was being broken that wasn't and I'm like no that's not it and there I could have tried to dispute it but I didn't think I was gonna get anywhere and um, I was just so fucking confused and then I was reading something about oh well maybe it didn't encrypt right and that might be why it's doing it and or didn't come over from a from a API trusted source or verified source and, and if that's the case then you're gonna have to re-upload and and then I'm like thinking well did something go wrong with with the twitch export because I didn't send this to you myself this came over from twitch and um, like I did not have the video on my system this did not go through my internet this went through somebody else um, so I was so confused and then I was so upset and I was like, fuck it. And I, I just, I took down both videos, right? I deleted them completely off the channel. Because I didn't understand what the fuck was going on. And they're like, oh, these are just warnings. But, you know, if you get another warning, then you're going to get a strike. And I'm like, YouTube, what are you even going on about? I don't even understand right now. Um, huh. Turns out, they now have a message up on the dashboard for for where you load up your videos or at least I do that said oh videos that were uploaded between this day and this day may have been set to private or locked to private due to a bug in our system we apologize for the inconvenience you can go ahead and re-upload those videos now or, or, you, or you are now able to unlock those videos or something and I'm like I deleted them, they were VODs, I didn't download them because space on my PC, so now they're just gone. And I'm like, thanks YouTube. So much. Thank you. So, <laughs> pretty, pretty damn, pretty damn salty about that, but. Alright, I know we're a little crooked here. I'm trying to get this next piece worked in. I'm going to try to leave a little bit. That angle might actually be a little harsh. Um, I'm going to try to leave in a little bit of space here between these two. 
this was that second one that middle one that we're trying to put in a little bit of a fuzzy disaster. It's like a little tiny end nubby. This doesn't want to collaborate whatsoever. that put in. Oh, what? That kind of kind of is going to sit in there. I really want to get um, some more yarn colors. So that we can do some sunset stuff. I don't really have the sunset colors that I would need to do that. I just don't have any money to get any yarn right now. And the yarn is sort of on sale at the moment. Um, not as good of a sale as I had gotten this batch on um, at New Year's. But it's still a, a decent sale price for what it is. Um, it, it's a price I'd be willing to pay. It's about 50 cents more than what I paid at Christmas. Or at New Year's, excuse me. Um, but I don't have the cash right now, so that's going to have to wait at least a little while. And you know, since I've seen it go on sale a few times, um, it'll come back around again. We just kind of have to be patient for it. Not my strong suit. But I mean, we are in the middle of this project anyway, so. But yeah, we might um, take a small break from, from needle felting while we're working on this series of at least kind of following the tutorial, but also sort of using it for for inspiration to try to figure out how to do this with needle felting. Um, uh, we'll, we'll probably work on that flamingo in between. I, I still have to try to plot some stuff out on that. I kind of have an idea of what I want to do. I don't know if I kind of want to try to Van Gogh the, si the, the sky, maybe. Or if I just want to do like solid blocks of color in the background and then um, line art in around it. Don't know. Still very much undecided at this point. I watched a watercolor tutorial last night um, I kind of like this one youtuber um, I don't watch all of their stuff but I, I love how no matter what she touches it comes out looking really decent um, like flabbergastingly so but she also does like fun tutorials and stuff. Um, and uh, her name's, oh, what the fuck is it? Hang on, let me think about this. It's the, f her YouTube channel name is The Frugal Crafter. She's been on YouTube for, I don't know how long. Um, 
I think I've seen videos that are like seven years old and stuff. So she's, she's been around for a while. Um, she knows her shit. Um, she, she has done tutorials on everything from stamping to colored pencils to pastels. Uh, I think she's done a little bit of oil painting. Her, her go-to, um, she does a lot of, of watercolor too, but, um, just the, the stuff she does is just incredible. And like the way that she, some of her tutorials incorporate multiple different media. She does, you know, she does a fair amount of mixed media too. Sorry, traffic's getting loud for some reason. I don't know why it's picking up at this point. It seemed, you know, as, as noisy as it can get here, it seemed pretty tame for the most part today. Unless that just happened to be a rare instance of some loud stuff all at once there. When it comes time to replace my glasses, I might put a couple different photos up on Twitter and get your guys' opinions, because there's, I think, two frames I'm not sure about. I don't know. One frame is significantly cheaper than the other. Um, I kind of liked this one frame. It's got some like little filigree work in the arm on it, but I'm concerned that my wispy, unruly hair is going to decide to tangle itself in it, so with my hair being the length of my ears at times, it's definitely a possibility. There was one color that I loved, but they were a half frame, and Russell brought up the point where we're not sure if the lens will stay over time. So it's a it's a half it's a top half frame, so I'm like, oh good point. I think we're not entirely certain what's um holding the the lens in the frame oh that was a big that was a big gap there um we might be able to cover that up though You guys are like, what big gap? I don't see a big gap. There's a gap right there that kind of opened up as we were fussing with our fiber here. This one might look a little more wave shaped. I kinda wasn't really thinking about direction on the other one, which is probably why it looks quite so chaotic. But that's okay. I can look that way. That was a chaotic wave that didn't know what the heck it was doing. Alright. Had to make sure what color I grabbed. I wasn't sure. I've got like three different color wispy piles here. I was like, what pile did you come out of, friend? Okay, I'll just fill you in. That one. So this doesn't need to be solid through here. But I'm still gonna try to have some some little breaks in it in places, but. I 
just really kind of wanted to fill in that gap that opened up there. All right, let's see, what time is it? All right. So I feel like we didn't get a whole shit ton today. Shit ton done today. I think the word, and then I don't always say all of them. Like my brain's like, oh, okay, we thought it, we said it. No, no, we didn't. I, I get like that when I type too. Is that you? Okay, I think that was the husband's mouse clicking. I don't normally hear his mouse clicking. That was kind of crazy. So you do hear his keyboard clicking in the background, so apologies for that. Mechanical keyboards aren't quiet. We used to do um, music with pretzel, uh, and then it started muting my VODs even though I had it, um, well they changed something on it, right, and I was on the free version, and I had it in the free version you have to, um, you have to have the, the artist and the song name being put in the chat, right? Hi Zuzu, what's up buddy? Zuzu's here, guys, he's back. He's mad that I haven't made dinner, but joke's on him because I don't have anything to give him. Um, and I'm sure he's already mooched snacks off of everybody today. Um, I don't want to give him a whole lot either because his stomach was upset last night. But um, where you had to annotate the, the artist and the, the song in the chat. And for a while it was doing it and then they did something to Pretzel and then it wouldn't put it in the chat right and I was fighting with it forever the one night like almost two hours and I'm like why aren't you working I don't understand what your problem is um and then I got it to work and we did the VOD and then it muted the VOD afterward and I'm like what I'm using pretzel the the songs were supposed to be good to go they were supposed to be streamer friendly why why are you doing this and then I just kind of got frustrated and was like, fuck it. If that's how we're going to be, we're not going to do music in the background anymore. I'm not playing this game. Especially when, you know, we're trying to send stuff over to YouTube and we need the audio. Because <laughs> there's no point in sending stuff over if it's going to be a completely muted VOD. Kind of defeats the purpose. In just a bit. Motorcycle. Thank you for joining today's stream. People have a lot of um, motorcycles and mopeds and shit around here. Apparently this area is part of a, uh, a scenic ride type thing. That a lot of people come up to this area to do. Is he standing next to you? What's up here? Is the dog standing next to you? Zuzu is, yeah. Hi. Okay, I think he has to potty. He's been over here a couple of times. Alright, buddy. And I don't know when he went out last. I, he seems to be perturbed that I'm still streaming, but we started late, so... His little fluffy butt's just gonna have to... to cope. He gets mad if I stream over a certain amount of time. He was pretty good about it on Friday when we were doing Planet Zoo. But, like, he'll be like this even if he's been out recently. He's just, he's very jealous. And I think he reaches his tolerance for me talking to people that he can't see. Okay, my 
Either that or the cat's out on the front porch, which is entirely possible. He seems to be a better cat alarm than our security camera. We don't always hear the, the notification from the camera. Depending on the time of day, the cat doesn't always set it off. Or sometimes husband gets tired of all the notifications if the light reflecting off the car is going by is uh, setting it off. He'll sometimes mute the notifications on his phone. My goodness, the one day during one of the lightning storms, it was just constantly from the flashes that the camera was picking up. gotten that camera to put up in the attic when we were having the problem with the mice. So we could see what the hell they were doing. Or at least have the camera on the traps because we had live traps up there. So um, the camera would go off when there would be movement around them and then we could use the camera to check the trap. So we didn't have to go all the way up there every time. Because it, it's not an easy accessible space. An easily accessed space. It's um, a bit of a pain in the ass to uh, get in there. Because there's no, there's no ladder and there's no stairs. It's just like a hole in the ceiling and we have to get our own ladder to try to get up in there. And we had to attach like a, a big stick to the one live trap to, or it was like a broken broom handle that we had saved, like the broom broke off the bottom of it or something. And we just saved the handle because we're like, we might need this for something. And then we just attached the, the one larger live trap to that. So I've got this kind of on an angle to try to remind myself that I need to try to put this in at a bit of an angle here. And one thing I've learned, and this might sound so stupid, and some people would probably be like, well, yeah, duh. But um, I've learned to not be afraid to turn what I'm looking at or what I'm working on. And I know some people are going to be like, what? Sometimes when you're doing arty things, you're almost afraid to turn it or it feels like that's not how it's done like you're not allowed to turn something upside down you're not allowed to to change the angle of your piece but you totally are like change it turn it some people are better drawing on one side of like one side of an object than the other So sometimes if you turn it upside down, like you've got like the one side of it and you're like, oh yeah, that looks awesome. And then you're, you're on like the same orientation of your paper and you're trying to draw the other side of it and it just, it, it's misshapen, the, portion, the proportions aren't right, it just, it looks like crap. Turn your paper. Um, if you need to draw the other side of the thing upside down, then do it. 
I know it won't work for everybody or everything. It kind of depends on what you're doing. But don't be afraid. We need to learn to not be afraid of our art supplies. Which is very difficult sometimes, because sometimes they can be intimidating. Like, I'm still intimidated by my my watercolor paints. Like, I'm so afraid to pull them out. I, I've got I got them in tubes. Because it was it was a bit of a sale. So I was like, oh yeah, you know, look at these look at all these colors. Like, I'm not good at color theory. I'm not good at mixing stuff. Don't don't ask me about color theory. I'm very bad at it. I know what my eye likes to look at. And don't get me wrong, I am trying to learn a little bit through watching other tutorials and and people doing other stuff, but my brain just likes to grab the color and go. But then again, I'm also one of those heathens that, that mixes paint colors with, with my brush instead of, instead of a palette knife. Oh no! Oh no! To art jail with you! I'm just kidding. I like mixing it with my brush better than I do a palette knife. I just do. And they're my brushes to ruin, damn it, so... Back the fuck off. <laughs> kind of thing. For me... It's easier to mix paint with my brush. Hang on, my eye itch is really bad. For me, it's easier to mix paint with my brush because then I can get a feel for how much paint I actually have mixed and how far it's gonna go than I can using a palette knife. To me, the palette knife is more wasteful because then I have to scrape the paint off the palette knife and then I'm just like, well, I could have just mixed this with the brush and then went straight at it with the brush. You know, like, to me, it, it kills me to waste paint. Even if it's a 50 cent jar or bottle of paint, it kills me. I know it's probably ridiculous of how much it kills me, but I'm just like, ugh, wasting art supplies. Just why? You okay? Uh huh. He was installed out for Kitty. Oh. He did go to the bathroom, but then he dragged me out back so we could look around for Kitty to come out. Did Kitty come out? Yes. <laughs> Uh, Zuzu was promptly ran up to him and Kitty flopped over on their back and meowed at him and they sniffed and everything. So they reacted positively to each other. Hmm. Something. I'm still waiting for Nom Noms to just have enough of Zuzu being in his face and just haul off and, and swing at him. And I don't know why you're so intrigued by the outside kitty when we've got five cats in here and you're scared to death of all of them. You're a very strange doggo. I hope you realize that. Or is it just the novelty of the outside kitty that smells like the outside? That's telling you of all of his adventures. I don't know, sir. I just don't know. Oh, right. So, I'm actually getting really hungry. Let's see here. Let me take a moment to pause. All right, so I think we're going to stop here for today. Um, we're going to go see John uh, Terwinkle.
He's playing something called Last Epoch. Not sure if I'm saying that right. Um, we'll go see John. Oh, cat's on the porch now. So, uh, thank you guys for hanging out with me this afternoon into the evening. Um, next stream is going to be on Wednesday. And, well, it, it's going to be on Wednesday. I don't know what we're doing yet. It depends on the weather. We're going to try to do World of Warcraft. Um, if we can't, then we'll do Parkitect. As we try to get through that current campaign that we're working on. But it'll be one of those two on Wednesday. Um, so you guys have a great night. We're going to go see Turwinkle and see what he's up to. Take care of yourselves and enjoy your week.